side. So let's let's get on uh, to to the next uh, area of discussion about uh, David Sinclair. So I, I want to talk about David Sinclair. And uh, here we go. Let's let's see what he has. I mean, he's about three and a half years younger. Oh, so what are you doing personally? Uh, well, you know, most of the time I'm in the lab and trying to run a bunch of companies to make these drugs a reality. Uh, but daily, you know, I try to keep a healthy weight. I do intermittent fasting, uh, which is pretty easy because I'm so busy I forget to eat. How many hours do you give yourself every night? Uh, well, I suffer from uh, late night snacking, but I try to skip breakfast and, and even skip lunch if I'm busy. So I'm a night eater. Um, but that seemed to be good because a, a study came out about a couple of weeks ago, at least in mice, that it's not what you eat, it's when you eat that's most important for longevity. Really? Yeah. And when, when being when? Like what's well, best? I, it doesn't actually matter uh, if you eat a lot in the morning or a lot at night. I like nighttime eating. But you need a period during the day, at least if you're a mouse, probably if you're a human, where you're hungry. Um, and that puts your body in a defensive mode. And this, these are the things that we've been studying in my lab for the last 20 years. What are the processes that diet and exercise do for us that keep us healthy? And why does calorie restriction and intermittent fasting make animals live so much longer? And we think we've figured out a large part of how that works. And now we're mimicking that with molecules. Um, is the is the idea that you can mimic it with molecules and it will be as effective as intermittent fasting? I think the molecules will be better. Um, and not only that, when we add them on to a healthy diet and exercise in the animals, they do even better. It's like a supercharged mouse. Now, when you add them on to the mice, do you also add them on with intermittent fasting? And is there an additional benefit? Uh, we do. We do. Uh, one of the first molecules, that uh, infamous molecules that we uh, are known for is resveratrol from red wine. That molecule discovered it in my 30s, or at least linked it to aging. What we showed was that if you give it to a, a fat mouse, they're as healthy as a thin mouse. Uh, they live just as long. They didn't get heart disease and all of the other bad stuff. Then what we did was interesting. We gave it to the mice either every day in their food or let them skip a meal every day so that they were fed every other day. And that combination of resveratrol plus every other day feeding, we had the longest lifespan we'd ever seen. And it was, so it was additive. Same with exercise. If we give our latest molecule called NMN, uh, to a mouse and we exercise it, it'll run even further than it could with either of those alone. Okay, so uh, what he's talking about is the whole idea of uh, intermittent fasting. Walter Longo, I think, has done a good job with uh, clarifying this a little bit more. Um, I think it's important to recognize that eating through a window from 8 in the morning till 8 p.m. 12-hour window is, I think, agreeable and reasonable. To shorten it less than that, it should be under medical supervision or for good reason if you're carrying a lot of extra weight. But if you're older, uh, past age of, say, 40, and you're uh, not aware of the risk of fasting. But I think fasting can be done properly, but more on a plant-based whole foods diet. You don't have to fast as much because you're getting uh, far less calories, less caloric density. Now, uh, he's also talking about resveratrol. And there, there's different brands out there uh, of resveratrol. And I've tried the different ones. And I'll give you a good feedback about you know my experience in combination with my DNA testing. So I'm, I'm monitoring these things for the sake of helping you to look and live a better quality life, look longer, look, look better, feel better. And uh, I also, he, he mentioned about NMD, uh, which is the basically nicotinamide uh, uh, riboside. So uh, this, this is another ingredient that uh, I'm reviewing and researching, and I think, again, well worthwhile. Uh, he also talks uh, through this show about metformin. And metformin is a drug prescribed for diabetes. It's been associated with longevity. But I agree with Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Wright. Using berberin is a safer approach to go. So uh, I've been using something in uh, our heart insulin shield, uh, this product, which helps to get uh, the berberin and get the blood sugar level stabilized, which is one of the keys to longevity is, as they're advocating. Uh, certainly in the earlier part of this show, we were talking about 
fruit it stabilizes blood sugar, contrary to popular belief. We were talking about vegetables and salads and eating the whole food. So this combination makes sense. I'm also looking at uh, these uh, various ingredients that uh, companies are putting out. And David Sinclair himself is not essentially endorsing um, any of these particular products themselves, but this one has what's called rutin from Japanese sulfora flower extract powder. It has alpha lipoic acid, green tea, uh, parsley leaf, uh, some zinc, and niacin. So each of these uh, products that I'm looking at, you know, I think could play a role. Each of these products, I believe, can play a role in longevity. Uh, but I, I think we have to be sensible about what our expectations are. So let's go a little bit further, and then we're going to uh, kind of wind up this show and um, give you some final advice. So it's not an excuse to sit around and just eat chips and watch TV. It augments a healthy lifestyle, gets you further than what you could get naturally. So in, in the, are you seeing a benefit in addition? So is the idea to compound all those things together? Exactly. Right. So you asked about myself. So I, I do. I eat healthy. I try to skip meals. Uh, I also take supplements. Um, and in fact, most of my colleagues are in the field of aging or anti-aging, as, as people call it. Uh, so I take NMN every morning. What is NMN? Good question. So let me take a quick step oh, back. Sure. Uh, so about 20 years ago, uh, Lenny Garanti and a team of us at MIT discovered a set of genes that controls aging in yeast cells, just brewer's yeast, what you find in beer and bread. And those genes are called sirtuins, and there are seven of them in our bodies, five in yeast. And what they do is they protect all organisms on the planet, plants, bacteria, humans, from deterioration and disease. They're like the Pentagon. They sense when we're hungry, sense when we're exercising, and they send out the troops to defend us. So when you, when you put more of these genes into a yeast cell or, or a mouse, they'll live longer, between oh, 5 to 20% longer. And so we think that these genes are responsible for the effects of dieting and exercise, which is great. Which, what that means is we can now mimic that with molecules. So NMN is one of those molecules. So is resveratrol. You can think of resveratrol as the accelerator pedal for the sirtuin genes, and the NMN is the, is the fuel. And without fuel, resveratrol won't work, so NMN is the, f the gas in the car. I've heard of resveratrol, but yeah. is NMN a new molecule? Is this commercially available? Uh, some people have started selling it on the internet. Um, the fucking internet. It's related to uh, NR, which is sold by a bunch of companies. Uh, NR? Yeah, nicotinamide riboside is a supplement that raises the levels of a molecule called NAD. I feel like I should make a shopping list. So the... <laughs> <laughs> get a pen. So why, why are you writing that down, Joe? The, so the sirtuins, okay, get this. So sirtuins need NAD mm -hmm. to work. Without them, uh, they don't work. In fact, if you don't have NAD in your body, you'd be dead in about 30 seconds. It's a really important molecule. But as we get older, we lose NAD. So by the time you're 50, like I almost am, you have about the half the levels of once what you had when you were 20. So that's not good. And these sirtuins, they don't protect the body without high levels of NAD. So what NMN does, and this other molecule called NR, which both you can get on the internet, they boost the body's levels of NAD back up to youthful levels again. And if we give them to mice, uh, these molecules to, to mice or even to worms or yeast, they live longer and they're super healthy. Now, what level, like how many milligrams are you taking of these things? Uh, so, yeah, NMN is, is um, something I, I get from for myself, I'm not selling anything. So I take a gram of NMN in the morning. Based on clinical trials, it's been shown that that will raise NAD. With or without food? Um, I take a little bit of yogurt that I make myself at home just to settle me. Uh, yeah, I've been doing this for a while, uh, and uh, I only start doing stuff when I see it work in animals first. So take, take the yogurt, mix in some resveratrol. Resveratrol is great, but it's really insoluble. It's like brick dust. So in the yogurt, it'll dissolve. Take another half a gram of resveratrol and how much uh half a gram yeah it's, it's a it's a powder i have a few kilos left over from clinical trials in my basement uh, <laughs> so yeah that that's going to last me a few decades uh and then i also take at night some metformin which is probably the most radical thing that i take which is a, a prescribable drug for diabetes metformin met met m met and prescribable drug so you but you don't have diabetes i do not but you take it for for preventing cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and aging. Met for, can you spell it? M-E-T? F-O-R-M-I-N. 
Um, and so, okay, so he he's talking about the use of metformin, which is a drug, and it does alter. Uh, what's called mTOR, mammalian targeted on rapamycin. It's a small m, capital T, capital O, capital R. And this is something that really uh, has been shown that when you eat animal product, it causes an abnormal increase in mTOR, which shortens one's life. If we have too much mTOR, we also have more acne and skin problems. If we have mTOR, we have more incidence of cancer. If we take in fruit, it has the lowest level of leucine, which lowers mTOR. If we take in vegetables, it lowers mTOR because it's low in leucine. Uh, beans are a little higher in uh, leucine, uh, but these combinations of fruits, vegetables, beans, and peas, and whole plant-based foods, oil-free, are the best way to control mTOR. You don't have to take a drug called metformin to control insulin and blood sugar and mTOR. But we also know that DIM, methane, indole 3 carbonyl, that, uh, that DIM uh, from cruciferous vegetables helps with the hormonal balance. So uh, I've researched a lot of DIM products, the best products on the market, what works, uh, how to get the best results, and DIM, methane, definitely should be part of a protocol. Now, I'm going to also mention he's talking about use of NMN, NMN. So NMN is nicotinamide mononucleotide. So this is something that you can get. It's available. Uh, there's a few products out there that have it. And he's saying it's the fuel that has to work with resveratrol to, to make this whole thing work. And uh, nicotinamide uh, ribose is, is another one of these uh, ingredients. So we have been uh, closely monitoring the science and the research behind this. But um, I, I think it's important to hear this because um, <laughs> this was a show recorded with Joe Rogan, Anti-Aging Doctor's Key to Looking Younger, uh, basically Joe Rogan show. And there's some newer shows that have been out. So out of studies of 10,000 people and more, it's been shown that people who take metformin, even if, even if they have diabetes, are protected against other diseases of aging, even frailty. And so, Okay, so I, I wanted to again mention that uh, my comeback is the use of uh, berberin. Berberin is a better ingredient. It's a safer ingredient. Uh, we use it in a product that we call a Heart Insulin Shield or PCOS Heart. And that product, I believe, is a much safer approach to controlling insulin, blood sugar, and reducing mTOR and producing longevity. But I like it that David Sinclair admits that you need diet, you need exercise. And the diet that he alludes to is more uh, rich in plant-based foods. Um, Certainly, he advocates fasting, but he talks about fasting because people eat way too much animal product. And we can reduce the amount of window of fasting just by eating more oil-free, plant-based whole foods. And so not only do you want exercise, you want healthy diet, you want to detoxify with all the rich fiber, but you also need supplements. He said almost all the doctors studying immortality, anti-aging, longevity, and lifespan are taking supplements because you, you can get some of this from foods, but the amount of time you'd have to spend and grazing and eating the foods and collecting the foods. Um, I do both. I like to, I, I, I don't want to hedge my bets. So let's go a little bit further. M most scientists, if you ask them in my field, will say, yeah, metformin is likely to extend your lifespan. It's just that the FDA doesn't let you have it for aging because aging isn't a disease yet. So do you have to get diabetes to get it? Or do you have to get a sneaky doctor? Well, I wouldn't call it a sneaky doctor, but the doctor typically has to be convinced because they don't keep up with the literature. And right. it, it's, it's off label. Okay. Right. And how much do you take of that? Uh, I take a gram of that mm. as well, which is about a, a low dose. Uh, some diabetics take two grams, so it's not crazy amounts. Is there any side effects? Well, the good news is that it's extremely rare that you get sick from any of these molecules. Um, in millions of patients around the world, nobody's getting sick. The worst you'll have, as far as I can tell, is a stomach upset. Um, and I get that, which is actually helpful if I'm hungry. I, I lose my appetite. But uh, I, I think the downside is extremely low. And the, the upside is, you know, anything's better than what's coming. And what is the mechanism that metformin is operating under? Okay. 
So that so this is the great thing is that over the last twenty years we have figured out we scientists have figured out that there are universal regulators of aging from yeast to worms to mice and in humans, and there are three main pathways that we figured out respond to what we eat and how we exercise, and one of them is called AMPK, uh, and this is a a target of metformin, and so I'm active when I take metformin I'm activating my AMPK, which will send out the troops, uh, the sirtuins I've mentioned that's the second of the pathways and so i take nmn and resveratrol for that and then the third one is called mtor which is a pathway in the body that responds to how many amino acids how much meat you're eating uh, and it will also protect the body if you tweak it just the right way and there's only besides eating low amounts of protein the only way to to affect that pathway is with a drug called rapamycin which is which is a little dangerous to try and is is used for uh, immunosuppressant so it's not oh. something that I would recommend uh, and I don't take it Wow so this is your daily routine along with what what kind of like diet do you follow well I I try to not eat too much it's pretty easy to overeat so I okay so he went through a, a whole host of supplements uh, he mentioned a few medications and uh, the rapamycin, and that he wouldn't use himself. I, I, I tend to agree with him. Whatever you can do as natural as possible, the better. But if you really look into the science closely, you can see the tips to immortality or longevity or increasing lifespan have a lot to do with various nutrients that stabilize blood sugar, improve insulin balance, improve hormonal balance, uh, promote strength and longevity and well-being, which is what I've been doing for 40 years. So now let's go to see what he has to say about uh, diet. He's saying he doesn't overeat. He talks about fasting a lot. Um, let, let's, let's see what he has to say. Try to skip one or two meals a day. Um, I avoid sugars and carbs. Uh, I try to run once a week. I do workouts on the weekend. Uh, like you, I, I love saunas. I like to put my body. Okay, so he says he avoids sugars and he skips some meals. He, he, he runs a couple times a week and then on weekends and he likes saunas. So that, that's a good summary. Um, I think he could be more consistent on some of those things. He, he's playing up that he's such a busy scientist. He doesn't have time to fit in. Uh, maybe he doesn't. Maybe you should think about setting a high premium on the value of, of, of health. Um, as I originally worked with Tony Robbins, you know, Awaken the Giant Within, I think this textbook about date with destiny, which is based on his uh, incredible seminar to establish your values. I have a class on NLP that I teach people the values of health in relationship to your career and uh, in relationship to your family and spirituality. And it, it's really, I think, one of the cores to being more consistent, whereas David Sinclair is a little bit, uh, over, uh, I think, a little bit loose about some of his recommendations. And uh, I think the confidence level has to come through to convince you, the, the viewer, that this is the way to go. So I, I just want to give you encouragement that there's a better way to do this with what we call neuro reprogramming. But let's let's go further. body and some temperature stress so i go heat and then i jump in a cold bath mm. back and forth that that works well for yeast we can do that in the lab and they they live 30 percent longer so uh there's all that um do you ever generally, try generally i eat normally do you ever try going from sauna to cryotherapy uh no i haven't tried actual cryotherapy just a. Oh, you haven't done it at all no you want to do it today sure have you got one yeah yeah, yeah. we'll take you cool. take you down the street there's a great one because it's um, there's different kinds and some of them are from the neck down where they're using liquid nitrogen. The other ones, they actually freeze the air. So when they're, they're using the nitrogen to freeze the air and they're pumping in air that's 240 degrees below zero and you're, you know, you're going to do about two minutes. I do three because I, I do it all the time, but uh, it's awesome. I do three and then I take 10 minutes off and then I go back in for another three. Yeah, it makes sense. And what you're doing to your... Okay, so... Uh, Joe Rogan's talking about cryotherapy, which I have a video showing you. I've done it. Um, you you get into a tank. Uh, I, I like to have my head um, above, but you know when you're in the tank, you're you're in a full cryotherapy uh, facility. So uh, three minutes is reasonable. You you have to be very careful and has to be monitored. Uh, I I think uh, 
it's it's on the principle of hormesis, and he was talking about uh, alternating between uh, heat and cold. Uh, I like to do something where uh, I um, start off with uh, a Epsom salt sea mineral bath, uh, and then I go into the far infrared spa, relax sauna, and then I rinse with some cold, uh, pure, clean, uh, filtered water. And that contrast is, is, is pretty good. I also do altitude conditioning with CVAC that gives quite a bit of contrast uh, in altitude down from high to low. So I think the contrast ideas are, are very, very good. So let, let's, let's continue with uh, this discussion. This is fun. Your body, when you do that, we think, is to activate these longevity pathways like the sirtuins. Yeah. And, uh, and that's really the trick is to activate. Okay, so I think it's important that you hear that word sirtuins. It's going to come up quite a bit. The sirtuins are these very special activated uh, proteins that control the genes. And so let's hear what he has to explain about that. That this is a very important part. That it's kind of a relatively new discovery in the last uh, uh, several years in in biology. Activate your body's defenses against aging. Uh, I mean, the old theories about aging you got to throw them out. Most people at parties will tell you, oh, antioxidants free radicals, DNA damage, or mutations. That is all, for the most part, incorrect. That antioxidants cause DNA damage? No, that's that, true. That it repairs DNA damage. Well, antioxidants have been a, a rather big failure in the aging field. But resveratrol is an antioxidant, correct? Uh, it's a mild antioxidant, but it doesn't work by being an antioxidant. Oh, what does it work? What is the pathway? Uh, it, it steps on the accelerator pedal of these sirtuin enzymes. Oh, okay. And so it's directly controlling uh, the body's defenses against aging. So as we discussed it, or as people discussed it as an antioxidant, it was just a, mi a mild form of antioxidant, but it did so much more. Right. And we know this because if you create a yeast cell or a worm or a mouse, and then you knock out the gene for the sirtuin, now the resveratrol doesn't help the animal anymore. That's interesting because when people talk about wine, th that's the one thing they say, the resveratrol is an antioxidant. It's really good for you. Yeah, it, this is one of those urban myths that never mm. goes away and still fuels a billion-dollar industry. But what we're finding is that the molecules in plants, like resveratrol, first of all, that we think they're produced by plants because the plants are benefiting from the stress. Uh, we call it hormesis. A little mm. bit of stress is good for you. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger kind of thing. That's, that's a very important statement, hormesis. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, let's not be extreme what doesn't kill you, but I think the contrast where you're breathing heavily during exercise, where you're um, taking uh, some of the cold therapies, using far infrared spa to detoxify and pull chemicals out of the body, um, using altitude conditioning, use Tesla Max, which increases the electrical stimulation of muscular contractions. Hormesis is kind of like lifting weights your body has to adapt and get stronger and you want to get stronger as you age this is one of the keys to longevity he's discounted the idea of chromosomes and you know some of the early theories of antioxidants and i would tend to agree with him those are part of the idea but you have to roll them all in together and know how to select like so selective antioxidants such as molecular hydrogen there's a lot of body of science even on human studies that selective antioxidants not just broad scale antioxidants are effective so i would agree with him on that but more um he's not defining the better source or the better higher level to intervene uh namely again uh you want to eliminate some of the uh free radicals but not all of them because some a little bit of stress from free radicals is good when i look under blood i can see under a microscope uh examples of very healthy blood and some people who have routinely exercised and stressed themselves and taking where they're breathing heavily they're not just strolling in the park a little bit uh, not that i'm making fun of walking or strolling but you you, you got to push the body somewhat if you if you want to beat aging as we know it so let's go a little bit further Thing. And hormesis was discovered oh, about 60, 70 years ago when people were spraying herbicides on plants and a little bit of herbicide actually made them stronger. And we think that these molecules in plants are similar. They make the plant stronger during times of stress. 
okay, I, I would be careful about his comment about herbicides made the plant stronger because herbicides, if you consume them, they get in your body, they concentrate in your body fat. That's not good for humans. It may help for plants. So you got to be careful because some of David Sinclair's work, a lot of it is with lab animals and, and rats and, and yeast. Uh, you really have to look closely at uh, successful long-lived populations, the blue zones, what they're doing, and then look at hormone intervention and anti-aging and stem cells and kind of put that together, which is what my core work is. So don't get too caught up in just animal studies. Maybe that's safe in, in the yeast studies, but uh, uh, go beyond that. So uh, again, be careful of some statements that uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to run out and think it's okay to somehow take in herbicides or pesticides. You want to still go organic and clean and non-GMO where possible. So this. So if you stress a grape that's for winemaking, you'll get great wine, but you also get a lot of resveratrol. And so when we ingest that resveratrol from the plants, we get the same health benefits because the plants are activating their sirtuin pathways and we have the sirtuins and they activate us as well. Ah, oh, interesting, interesting. So low carb, low sugar... Um, any specific type of protein? Do you limit your amount of protein? Okay, I, I would be careful when Joe Rogan saying low carb, uh, low sugar. I agree, low sugar, but carb is complex carbohydrates. Uh, resistant starch complex carbohydrates, fibrous foods, foods is grown. Those are the longest lived people. You can't remove that from the diet. Early on in our broadcast, I made that very clear and uh, refuting the whole paleo concept that somehow our ancestors ate tons of meat. We did not. Okay, so let's go uh, further. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoy eating mammals just as much as anybody, but um, I try to avoid them. Um, for the main... Well, two main reasons. One is that uh, there's this TMAO molecule that seems to cause heart disease. Um, TMAO. Yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. So, so, so this is good because he's putting Joe Rogan in his place. He's saying TMO from eating mammals. He avoids eating mammals, meaning he doesn't eat much of any meat. He tries to eat more of the plant-based foods. Joe's struggling with this. Let, let's see what Joe Rogan has to say. Um, and how is it linked to heart disease? Um, Are these epidemiology studies? I forget, but I, I do recall that the study was able to give the TMAO to animals and they developed heart disease. So mm. it's somehow causing it. I forget exactly how it... it well, that's a little concerning. David Sinclair, who puts himself as an expert, is forgetting the studies, maybe needs uh, some of my plan to help him with cognition. Okay, I'm just teasing for those of you who love David Sinclair. He's a sharp scientist. But the point is, uh, call, recalling uh, studies on uh, a podcast, that is a little difficult. I, I'll give him credit. But, you know, I, I think when you look at uh, Dr. Barnes uh, autopsying 10,000 people from around the world, those on an animal-based diet had severe atherosclerotic plaques and heart disease. Those on a plant-based whole foods diet had the lowest cholesterol level. They had the cleanest arteries. That's still true of all the blue zones, which eat the most fruits and vegetables, beans and peas and yams and sweet potatoes and so forth. So let, let's go further here. Uh, heart disease is reversible. Caldwell Esselstyn is, is absolutely correct. And some of the other scientists that I work with, I, I just, just wanted to uh, pull forth um, some of the, the various books um, with uh, uh, Dean Ornish, uh, The Spectrum Diet and his his work, uh, certainly uh, Nathan Pritikin and John McDougall in, in their work uh, here. I'm just pulling out uh, some books right out, out of my bookshelf. Take a look. Uh, McDougall's Medicine, uh, I'm a big advocate of. Uh, but I, I, I don't think you have to be so strict about avoiding nuts, seeds, avocados, and olives. I think if your body weight is pretty good, you can eat more uh, uh, beans and peas and, and, and vegetables. But I, I tend to agree a little bit more with uh, How Not to Die, Michael Greger, who was inspired by Nathan Pritikin, my mentor. But uh, Nathan Pritikin himself talks about whole food eating, and he does include soaked nuts and, well, not soaked, but nuts and seeds uh, in a gruel. I like to soak the nuts and seeds uh, in, in my porridge with some berries. Now, you can see all the little pads there and all the notes that I've taken on all these books here. So... Uh, <laughs> If you ever come to my office in Orange County, Costa Mesa, California, I think you'll you'll have some fun with um, uh, 
the, the incredible uh, scientific library and nutrition and health. And uh, please, uh, you know, take take a look at my new book, Acne Be Gone for Good. This has been out in the market, helping over 50,000 young people clear up uh, their skin, pimples, acne. Dr. Sonia Batarisi Banasel, top board certified dermatologist, who's co-written this book with me. So... Uh, again, there's just a, a wealth of information. My favorite book of all time. Uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm just trying to see if I have that on my shelf. Um, here's one of the books, Nathan Pritikin, Diet for Runners. Uh, all the books by Pritikin were well referenced, and uh, I, I think that's important. Uh, Dr. Um, James Anderson for Diabetes. This book is pretty hard to find probably. You can uh, look it up with the ISBN number. I've got an ISBN number of 0668053305, Positive Health Guide. Uh, really important book um, on exploring the whole thing with diabetes. Uh, Dr. Uh, John McDougall's book, McDougall's Medicine, A Second Opinion. Uh, a really uh, great book. And so, you know, the, these books by doc, Dr. Dennis Burkett, e Eat Right to Stay Healthy and Enjoy uh, Life More by Dr. Dennis Burkett, a very important book on the importance of fiber. So I, I've been studying this, this information for 40 years. I, I, and again, I don't just keep repeating that. Uh, but, you know, the, these are some of the things that you need to be aware of when we're talking about diet, nutrition, and health. Uh, but I think from a supplemental standpoint, David Sinclair is on to some good stuff. So let's hear a little bit more of what he has to say in conclusion. Might be damaging the genome. That's my recollection. With uh, omnivores or predators? Uh, I think as red meat is the culprit. Right. So are they giving this to rats or are they giving this to... It was a mouse study again. Mm. So, I mean, mice might be different from humans, of course. Yeah. Uh, but the other problem with, with meat in general from, from animals is that there's a lot of amino acids in there and it's easy to eat a lot of meat. Uh, and so if you have high levels of amino acids, it will activate this mTOR pathway, one of those three longevity pathways. And you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that because mTOR has evolved to sense times of adversity and stress and hunger. So why do people see a performance benefit when they consume branched-chain amino acids? Ah, uh, really good question. So in the short run, just like taking testosterone, it will give you performance benefits. But we think in the long run, uh, it'll actually come back to bite you. So how will branched-chain amino acids come back to bite you? So branched-chain amino acids will activate this mTOR pathway. Mm -hmm. um, and when we do that in animals, we actually we reduce their lifespan. So it's the opposite. You want to keep those levels low. That's interesting. That, that seems, I mean, for a dummy... Okay, so he's talking about uh, amino acids uh, in excess and branch chain amino acids and, and uh, that it's going to activate the, the mTOR pathways. I, I, I think you, you have to be specific for what you're working on. And um, it's important for Joe to get this, that most people consume far too much protein, particularly if they're on a, a low protein plant-based diet, they could afford to eat uh, a little bit of supplements here and there. But if they're on an animal-based diet and then they pile on more amino acids, it, it's definitely a problem. So let's hear what uh, Joe has to say in his concern. Like me, it seems counterintuitive because what's making you perform better currently, you would see, you would think, especially something like amino acids, a natural part of the human body, you would think that that would be beneficial. You're adding to your body yeah. something that it needs. Yeah, you would. But but what you should consider is that it's a trade-off. Uh, there's a, a theory that's probably correct. Uh it's the uh, some Tom Kirkwood's theory called the disposable soma. And our bodies want to do one of two things. We either want to grow really fast and reproduce fast, build up a lot of muscle, cells divide. That's great in the short run. You, you know, you'll be fertile, you can run, but actually that's at the expense of hunkering down and building a long-lasting body. Mm. And that's a trade-off over time. And so animals that grow fast and reproduce fast, like a mouse, will only have a short lifespan. Whereas a whale that grows slowly and reproduces slowly will live a long time. Interesting. So the idea is you're, you're limiting your calories, you're limiting your carbohydrates, you're limiting your protein, you're limiting your amino acids, but you're ramping up on all these beneficial molecules. Right. These, these pathways that have evolved since the beginning of life to make us live longer during adversity so we can thrive when times come back that do are good. You, do you take into consideration 
quality of life versus length of life? Like, is there a, a like a sweet spot? Yeah, that, well, it's hard to ask the mice how they feel, uh, but <laughs> they uh, we do test them and we do frailty studies, and we can see that they've got better memory and they can run further on a treadmill. Um, they're stronger, those kind of things. They see better, and uh, you know we think that that probably means they're happier as well. Yeah, I, I think that we've covered some great information. I, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, segment of pursuing immortality uh, with lifestyle medicine and wellness. Uh, every one of you watching this show, I, I thank you for tuning in. Please share, uh, consider, and comment. We, you know, that, that's what makes our show so good. We're getting more and more viewers and more and more people subscribing. Uh, just in summary, we started off with Bernardo Lapello and talking about him making a fresh fruit salad and a green salad and getting the bulk and the fiber and getting exercise and uh, outdoors in the daylight and rubbing olive oil on his skin. I, I'm going to start trying that. I, I, I want someone out there to tell me, though, uh, olive oil usually smells a little nasty. So if I rub olive oil on my body in the morning going to work, <laughs> I wonder how I'm going to smell uh, to my colleagues. But um, if I guess rub it on olive oil on my skin at night at bedtime, but then uh, I guess I have to have certain sheets that I have to wash every so often because I don't want them on my regular um, uh, blankets and so forth. I sleep on a waterbed. I have... <laughs> for probably more than 40 years. I love sleeping on a waterbed. It's kind of a floatless type, you know, um, just a dreamlike state. And then I listen to my neuro reprogramming, the power of the mind every night, most uh, morning, as I'm also studying other podcasts and webinars and things. So uh, I have a dream life. I'm really blessed. I, I feel great. Uh, you know, as you know, uh, January 5th, uh, 2020, I have turned uh, age 65 years young, and uh, I'm planning to continue to do these uh uh, DNA studies here. I'm, I'm going to kind of measure these things out so you know uh, what's real and what's not. Um, of course, uh, please uh, take a look at my uh, special uh, cookbook, uh, Simply Healthy uh, Cookbooks. This is a, a, a great recipe book. Uh, it's taken me over 15 years to gather the recipes from around the world. You can go to uh, a link at nickdelgado.com, click on the products, and you can kind of check out you know all the latest tastiest, fresh, whole foods, uh, GMO-free, organic whenever possible, of course. And don't add the oils, even though some of these people are still enamored. Oil is kind of a new phenomena to, to the human existence. And uh, I, I, I tend to agree with this early took, uh, textbook by uh, Nutrition for Life by Nan Bromfen, one of the original researchers with uh, Nathan uh, Pritikin, uh, that we want to eat the whole foods and not add oils to the diet. And uh, certainly uh, my friend who's published some great books, uh, Awaken the Giant Within, if you haven't read it, it's been around for quite a while. Uh, Anthony Robbins, this book um, certainly uh, set the stage for helping me to establish my values and my goals and, and meet with some other incredible NLP experts, and, uh, which has helped me to kind of formulate uh, my newest programs called Neuro Reprogramming. So I have a special offer for you. I just wanted to mention this book was copyrighted in 1991. I attended with Tony Robbins in 1991-92. Uh, 93 and and did some of the work with him which uh, later uh, in the year 2000 I wrote the book Row Young and Slim so I just wanted you to be aware of my latest work uh, Mastering Love, Sex and Intimacy uh, certainly probably one of the most important books because love is one of the most important emotions we all must enjoy and share to live a longer better quality life certainly if it's a longer life it will seem a long time if we don't have love in our life and friends and uh, happiness so uh, again, please uh, share this. And for those of you who want that special, if you go to our website that's um, in the end of the show notes, uh, we, we have a special immortality anti-aging pack that's available. And with that, we're going to include uh, three of our best downloads on neuro reprogramming that I'm uh, assuring you will make a profound difference. If you're hearing this on a podcast or a, a replay on a webinar, uh, we might divide this up into a few, three different segments. Uh, but uh, it's been a, a joy working with you because this show started at three o'clock. It's now uh, four, 4.50. There was a little part where I think there might 
might have been some uh, music that uh, YouTube interrupted. We'll try and identify what their issue was uh, regarding any uh, things for broadcast. But again, uh, this is Dr. Nick Delgado. Be well, be strong. Thanks, everyone. And um, I'm going to get on with a, a beautiful day as the sun sets, and I'm going to head to the beach and get a little workout in. And uh, again, thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye.